In the previous video, we had derived this equation for, that describes a pendulum, not just for small angular displacements, but for uh, any displacement of the pendulum. And let's just consider the, perhaps the first few terms to have an idea what this means. So we have here t equals 2 pi times the square root of the length of the pendulum divided by the gravitational constant, then we have this stuff to consider. So we have 1, and then we start summing starting when n equals 1. So 2 minus 1 is 1, that's just going to be 1, 1 squared is 1. This is 2, that's just going to be 2, 2 squared is 4. And then we'll have the sine squared of theta m over 2. So that's for n equals 1. Let's take a few more terms. We have plus. Now when n is equal to 2, we have 2 minus 1, 4 times 2 times 2 is 4 minus 1 is 3 factorial factorial. And that's just 3 times 1, but 3 squared is 9. And then in the denominator, we have 2 times 2 is 4, factorial, factorial, that equals 4 times 2 is 8, 8 squared is 64. This will be signed to the fourth. Theta m over 2. Let's just get one more term then, when n equals 3. So 3 times 2 is 6 minus 1 is 5. So we have 5 factorial factorial. That's 5 times 3. That's 15. But we have 15 squared, so that's going to be 225. Then down here, we have 2n factorial factorial. So this is going to be 6 factorial factorial squared. We have it squared here. So this is going to be 6 times 4 times 2 squared. And that's going to be 24, 48 squared, reaching for a calculator. I think that's 2304. And then we'll have sine 2 times 3 is 6. Theta m, the maximum displacement, divided by 2 in other terms. But here then, chapter T of course is the period, so when we take this and expand it out for the first couple of terms, we have 1 plus sine squared, sine to the fourth, sine to the sixteenth, and so forth. So if we have only a small angular displacement, then it's just going to be this, the standard equation that we see um, in many textbooks. But when we have larger angular displacements, then we have to take into consideration these other terms as well. And as we can see, it gives us a more complicated expression. But that's as far as we're going to take it. We just wanted to give a demonstration there. Um, when you want to solve the pendulum equation and you want to 
include all possibilities, not just very small angular displacements. It actually gets to be quite a complicated um, process. Uh, we had to consider elliptic integrals, and then we had to uh, we had a, a beta integral that we had to solve along the way. What is unique, though, is that for the elliptic integral that was involved, when we solved it, it could be solved in terms of uh, just ordinary functions. Of course, many elliptic integrals cannot be solved so conveniently. Um, we'll consider in future videos more problems of this type when we consider um, uh, the theory of orbits. Again, once you deal with that subject matter, you encounter more sophisticated types of elliptical functions. So we'll consider some of those in our future videos.